metals and non metals chemical properties of metals and non metals reaction with water some metals react very strongly and quickly with water sodium is a metal that is stored in kerosene because the moment it gets in contact with water it produces a lot of heat let's see the reaction However, all metals do not react this way. Iron reacts very slowly with water. What about non-metals? Most non-metals do not react with water. But some do react very vigorously with air. For example, phosphorus catches fire in air, so it is stored under water. Reaction with oxygen. You know that iron is a metal. You have learned that when iron reacts with oxygen to form a different substance called rust, it is a chemical reaction. What is rust? It's iron oxide, which is a material that has iron and oxygen in it. So we can say that iron reacts with oxygen to form iron oxide fe plus o2 plus h2o gives fe2o3 you also know that when we burn a magnesium ribbon it burns with a bright flame to form magnesium oxide that is a chemical change too mg plus o2 gives mgo Copper also reacts with oxygen. A copper vessel kept in moist air for a long time gets a green coating. What is the green substance? It is a mixture of copper hydroxide and copper carbonate. 2 Cu plus H2O plus CO2 plus O2 gives CuOH2 plus CuCO3. What is the nature of these metal oxides? Are they acidic or alkaline? We put these oxides in water and then we can check if the solution formed is acidic or alkaline. How do we do that? Remember something called litmus? We have studied it in 7th science in acids, bases and salts. Well, that litmus paper is used to check if something is acidic or something is alkaline. If blue litmus paper turns red, then the solution is acidic. If the red litmus paper turns blue, then the solution is alkaline. When you put red litmus paper in the mixture of oxides in water, it turns blue, indicating that these solutions are alkaline. So. We conclude that oxides of metals are alkaline in nature. How do non-metals react with oxygen? We can check this by burning a non-metal like sulphur. Take some sulphur powder in a deflagrating spoon. A deflagrating spoon is a spoon with a long vertical handle. Deflagration means heating something till it burns quickly. When you heat sulphur, 
it burns. Quickly put the spoon in a jar and cover it so that you can catch the gas that comes from it. After some time, remove the spoon from the jar and add some water to the jar and shake it well. That way, the gas dissolves in the water. Then check it with litmus paper. You will see that the solution turned blue litmus red. So, it is acidic. Oxides of non-metals are generally acidic. What happened when you burned the sulphur? It formed sulphur dioxide. S plus O2 gives SO2. And when we mixed it with water, it formed sulphurous acid. SO2 plus H2O gives H2SO3. Now watch what happened exactly. Reaction with Acids When metals react with acids, they usually release hydrogen as a result of the reaction. Let's see that happen. Take four test tubes. Put a magnesium ribbon in one, a small piece of aluminium in the second one, iron filings in the third and a small copper wire in the fourth. Using a dropper, add 5 ml of dilute hydrochloric acid to each of the test tubes. If you see no reaction, heat the test tube gently, as heating always speeds up any reaction. Remember to be very careful in this experiment. Now, take a burning matchstick near the mouths of each of the test tubes. What happened? You hear a slight pop on the first three test tubes and not on the fourth one with copper. The pop was because hydrogen was released in the reactions in the first three tubes. Hydrogen is a highly combustible gas and gives a pop sound when heated and combines with oxygen in the air to form water. Let's see the chemical equations of the reactions that took place in the test tubes. In the first test tube, magnesium reacted with dilute hydrochloric acid to form magnesium chloride and hydrogen. Here is the equation. Mg plus HCl gives MgCl2 plus H2. In the second test tube, aluminium reacted with dilute hydrochloric acid to form aluminium chloride and hydrogen. Here is the equation. Al plus 3HCl gives AlCl3 plus H2. In the third test tube, iron reacted with dilute hydrochloric acid to form ferrous chloride and hydrogen. Here is the equation. Fe plus 2HCl gives FeCl2 plus H2. In the fourth test tube, 
copper does not react with hydrochloric acid at all. Copper, however, reacts with the concentrated sulfuric acid to form a copper sulfate along with water and sulfur dioxide gas. Here is the equation. Cu plus 2H2SO4 gives CuSO4 plus SO2 plus H2O. What happens when you do the same to non-metals? Try doing the same experiment with charcoal powder and sulfur powder. You will see that there is no reaction at all. So, non-metals do not react with acids. Reaction with bases Now let's see what happens when metals react with bases or hydroxides. Alkalis or bases are hydroxides of metals itself. When you put a piece of aluminium in a sodium hydroxide solution, a reaction occurs. Again, when you hold a burning matchstick to the mouth of the test tube, you hear a pop. That tells us that the gas released is hydrogen. So we can say that when bases react with most metals, hydrogen gas is released. The reactions of bases with non-metals are quite complex. You will study them when you are older. Displacement reactions Take five beakers and name them as A, B, C, D and E. Take about 50 ml water in each beaker. Now add CuSO4 and fuse zinc granules in beaker A. In beaker B, add CuSO4 and an iron nail. In beaker C, add ZnSO4 and copper turnings. Add FeSO4 and copper turnings to beaker D. Add ZnSO4 and an iron nail to beaker E. Keep the beakers undisturbed for some time. What changes do you observe in these five beakers? You know that the metal can displace another metal from its compound in a solution. If you look at the reaction that happens when you mix copper sulfate and zinc, you will see that the zinc bumps copper out of its compound and takes its place. So it displaces copper. Zn plus CuSO4 gives ZnSO4 plus Cu. Hence, it is a displacement reaction. Can copper displace zinc from the zinc compound? No. Why not? Because zinc is more reactive or has more reaction power than copper. A more reactive metal can displace a less reactive metal. A less reactive metal cannot displace a more reactive metal. 